So hello, welcome to the second Digital DJ Tips webcast. I'm with Mike Monday again on the other side of the world. Hello, Mike. Hello. And um, for those of you who didn't see the first one, it was a little experiment we did one weekend last month. We just thought we'd have a chat, record it and talk through some of the questions. We obviously receive hundreds of questions a week here at Digital DJ Tips from, from our readers. And we try and answer them all on the blog and on the forum and so on. But there's, you know, there's any opportunity to, to dig into that pile and, and help some people out. It's, I think it's worth taking. So that's exactly what I've done this week. I've just piled through the, um, the inbox of questions from people. So thank you very much. And if you want to leave us a question, go to digitaldjtips.com slash contact. Uh, and there's a link at the very bottom of the website as well to get to that form. So hello, Mike. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? I'm good. Have you had a good month? I have, I've had a very good month. Thank you. Good. Um, so for those who haven't met Mike, he is the guy who teaches our audience and other people how to um, how to finish what they start when it comes to producing music and I guess in you know general uh, in the general scheme of things. And um, he is also a writer for us. He's written some great great articles in that kind of general area with his hard won experience uh, about from the worlds of DJing production. I first met Mike on the dance floor or rather in the DJ booth many years ago. So. It's great to have you with us again, Mike. Great to be here. Now, I've scribbled down some questions, and, and for the, for the um, interest of transparency, um, and because this is the internet, not, uh, not the British Broadcasting Corporation, <laughs> I'm going to come clean and tell you that my doorbell is going to ring in half an hour. When it does, we're going to have a quick wave, and I'm out of here. So, um, so let's get as many done as we can in the meantime, yeah? Yeah, try and, try and um, stop me rambling too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I've just um, let's just plough through this list of questions I have on, on the screen in front of me from, from readers this month. So the first one is from Dylan, and he says um, he's got two problems. The first one is he, he can't seem to find a place to DJ. Everywhere he checks has got residents booked for every open night, and he feels like he's kind of missing something in it all. Um, and the second issue, this is, in fact, let's deal with the first one first, because these are very different issues. So not being able to find anywhere to play. Um, I guess my view on that, Mike, is that there's never anywhere to play, just like there's never any money to pay you. You know, it's a hard world out there. Um, you have to accept that every single step you take is going to be an effort and they will get easier as you, as you keep taking them. And at some point, five years down the line, you'll realise that you've been playing two or three nights a week for the last two years and, and you know, you made it. Um, what's, your, you know, what's your view on that? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, DJing is like this generation's playing the guitar used to be. Um, the difference is that you don't need to learn how to play the guitar to DJ. <laughs> and um, so uh, while being a great DJ is, is as hard as anything else, um, the actual level of being able to do something is virtually, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing virtually. It, you know, you just need to uh, have some tunes and, and press play. So as a result, it is ridiculous the number of DJs compared to the number of places to play. So yes, that that is what a lot of people will be experiencing so from my point of view if you take me and Phil we are probably shining examples of two different ways to set yourself apart from all of those other DJs Phil started a night I wrote tunes that's two of the mo of the most kind of foolproof ways to set yourself apart obviously the night um, if you know, you know the night the night has to be successful and obviously with the tunes you have to uh, they have to be good enough to, to get people to want to book you but basically the general idea of trying to work out what it is that sets you apart from you know ev everybody's mum and dog who also DJs um, is the, the one of the best ways of getting gigs I mean I never went looking for gigs they came for me because of the tunes and in my case, you know, I got good at promoting. And uh, in the meantime, I was scrabbling around for anything I could find, anywhere I could find to play. And, you know, the money wasn't coming and so on. But I was all the time slowly getting good at something which stood me out. And, and being a DJ promoter worked for me. Being a DJ producer worked for you, Mike. Um, so, yeah, uh, Dylan, you need, to, you need to stick at it. Go with where your instinct is telling you to go. Do the stuff that you feel like you've got a bit of flair for, you know, if... Uh, if producing a mixtape twice a week is what's really firing you up, then, then keep doing it and keep getting them out there and, and, and put your energies where, you're, you know, where you feel they're best, they're, they're best put. Um, otherwise, it's, you know, you've got to be in it for the long term. It's not something that happens in six weeks. No. It took me four or five years to get anywhere. <clears throat> but, oh, excuse me, but I loved it. I enjoyed it. Dylan's second question. You're a lucky boy, Dylan. Lots of people <laughs> below you on this list. Um, 
But I like this question because he says this touches on something that I don't know how much we'll be able to help him, but it's, it's something that is, is genuine. He says, I hear great tunes all the time and I download them. And I've even started asking friends what they would like to hear. But the genres don't match. I have everything from disco to dubstep, and that makes for an odd set to dance to. Um, so I think his question is, how do I how do I kind of find some clarity in this big pile of music that doesn't really match? I'd like I'd like you to. I mean, the reason I think this is a good question, Mike, is that I know that in your career, which is like seventeen years, you constantly struggle with what what should my sound be, what should I sound like, you know. And so I think you might have an insight on this. Yeah, I mean, um, I found um, it was more so my production than my DJing um, because with the with DJing there, there's there was always the imperative to make somebody dance <laughs> um, so to a certain extent it was like I played tunes that made people dance um, that was kind of whether that be disco or tech house or techno or, well there's you know, your first piece yeah. of advice Dylan <laughs> yeah. you know look through have that one question in your head as you're looking for the next tune at all times yeah exactly um, but you know, certainly in terms of production, I went kind of all over the place. And as soon as I felt that I was get, I felt this kind of pressure of I'm, oh, I'm being pigeonholed. I kind of went off in another direction. I wouldn't necessarily say that is the best um, option because people um, like to know what they're going to get, um, whether that be a, a a DJ set or a tune. And um, you are uh, holding yourself back if you don't make that decision. Now, I made a successful career where I traveled the world and you know, the, the, earned my living for 17 years without making that decision. So I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying uh, you, are hold, you, you will be holding yourself back. And certainly at the start, what I would say is just make a decision. It can be for any reason. I mean, it does, it, you could say, all right, well, I like this club and this is what they play at this club or I like this club night and this is what they play at that club night. That's what I'm going to play. It doesn't need to be for the rest of your life and it doesn't need to be the most important decision ever. Decide what that, whatever that style is. Immerse yourself in it by, you know, listen to absolutely everything in that style. Focus on it. Try and become good at it. And in doing that, you will work out whether it is actually your style or not. So um, I, I think I think I think you're, you're right there. So it's kind of take something, take you know, there's a big world, big wide world of music out there. Focus on one bit and let the other bits kind of introduce themselves to you at the time, rather than trying to take it all in at once. Um, I mean, the very very best DJs, um, certainly some of them, um, you know, have spent a lifetime getting to the point where they really can play anything in a DJ set. I remember hearing um, the Chemical Brothers DJ once and. They played uh, straight from the album, not a remix, um, a Beatles record, a Beatles yeah. album track, bang in the middle of the set. <clears throat> and it sounded like it was meant to be there, you know. Um, that takes skill, and that's something that you won't develop with a great record collection. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't be collecting all these tunes, you know. They, they have them there, but um, like you say, Mike, I think starting with a focus is a good idea. Excuse me, I'm going to have some water. <clears throat> very hot and sweaty here in Spain today. Well, it's very cold it. here in Australia today. So yes, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's such a crazy thing. The internet. I do like it. Okay, <laughs> second question, third question, or second person. Um, now, I, I don't think I've scribbled down the name of this guy, but nonetheless, it's a very, uh, a very important one to cover. He says, "I'm aware of a very slight ringing in my ears. It's, it's not that bad, uh, but more aware of it at bedtime and first waking. Um, it was caused last Christmas by overexposure to very loud club music." Um, and according to a basic hearing test, I've not damaged my hearing. However, this does occur daily. Is there an affordable solution to protect my hearing? Um, or might it be best to avoid DJing and loud music altogether, given that I already have minor symptoms of tinnitus? Can, can my current situation be safely managed in your experience? I could live without loud music and DJing, but I don't think I could live with bad tinnitus. That's a serious question there, Mike. And uh, I guess you've had a, a lot of experience of being around pro DJs all your life, um, anything, anything, any wisdom spring to mind? Well, um, I have tinnitus um, it's, and it's um, not as bad now that I don't play in clubs every weekend um, and I for about the last three or four years got some earplugs made, um, they actually take a cast of your ear and, and, uh, and they have little filters in them that cut down the decibel level of the sound without taking out any of the frequencies because one of the problems with you know the normal like squashy 
earplugs is that you just muffle everything, which is obviously is no good if you're DJing. Um, uh, one of the, ma the, the major cause of tinnitus, because you can actually not have damaged hearing and still have tinnitus. So that your hearing isn't damaged doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have tinnitus. Um, it's yeah, a different well, thing. It sounds like that's the case in this, yeah, in this yeah, situation, um, doesn't it? So uh, tinnitus is actually one of the main causes of tinnitus is when the little um, ear hairs, which uh, how you perceive sound, they flatten down and, and w when loud, loud music comes in. So prolonged exposure, not just one bang will necessarily do it, but prolonged exposure to it means that the uh, hairs don't spring back up again. And that's what causes tinnitus for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, so the thing to bear in mind is, is it's prolonged exposure to high volume. So when um, you are in a loud situation, um, something goes on in your brain called habituation, where you become used to that loud music. So it no longer sounds loud. So, you know, when you first go into a club and it's like, oh, your ears feel like they're about to bleed. And then half an hour later, you're dancing you know, inside the speaker, that's habituation. Um, so w the, the ways to manage it are get some earplugs. I've, I've got a couple of links to an expensive website and a, 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 where you can get expensive ones made, but also some um, cheaper, uh, cheaper ones as well that I got from uh, one of my students. He, he recommended them. And I'm just um, making a note, just making a note of that, Mike, and we'll yeah, put that in the, in the we'll notes. We'll put it underneath. underneath. Um, and, um, Yes, earplugs in loud, loud environments. If you're at home and you're mixing, <coughs> um, take regular breaks while you're playing music because when you come back to it and you press play again, you'll be like, oh, I cannot believe I was listening to it that loud. You know, it's, it's, it's really true, and it's true with all kinds of things as well. It's true yeah. with your eyes on, on, yeah. on the computer screen. It's yeah. true with your back on a chair. You know, um, I mean, we're, we're not 20-somethings we're not 20, 20 anymore, no. Mike. And, um, <laughs> We've, we've had to the time to work this out and if anyone else can work this out a bit before us you now whatever you're whatever is holding you in a fixed position doing something is definitely worth breaking from every hour or so yeah um in order to allow whatever it is that you're not doing or that you are doing to, to change for a bit yeah and whether it's your back on a chair like i say or your, or your eyes on a screen or your ears in, in headphones um it's really important and it's also important creatively because of course you come back to it with a fresh air yeah, approach. absolutely, and I think I think I mean tinnitus is a, is is awful because it, there's no cure. Once the hairs are lying down, that's it. That, that's that's what's what's happening. And um, I've met I won't, I'm a, he'll remain nameless, but a very famous uh, DJ who was like in serious, you know, it was really really bad. And uh, you know he he was kind of getting depressed about it and all, all sorts of stuff. So you really 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 want to be careful with your ears with your hearing. Use earplugs. Take regular breaks. Don't dance in speakers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we're on that point. Let's move on to Corey. I think it's how, how you pronounce his name. He says, this is a creative one here. Uh, how do I develop consistency of excellence in the sets that I create? I spend a lot of time listening to my music and understanding it. Some days when I practice DJing, it just comes super naturally. The tracks I throw together, everything sounds great. But on the other hand, there are an equal amount of days when I struggle to make things sound right. I'm sure there's no no one answer to this. So he's, he's a smart guy already. Um, but is there some kind of theory or idea or concept that I should be keeping in mind, uh, aside from the obvious things like trying to mix in key? Um, but I think that's a separate point, actually, that last one. But, you know, before, before handing over to you, Mike, all I would say here is record your sets because you don't know if you're doing a good job or not. Um, you'll only know when you listen back to it. So record your sets is, is my big tip there. But over to you, Mike. Um, I mean, I think th w one of the things to bear in mind from this is that it doesn't matter how good you are, you are always going to have days when, we were just talking about this before we record, weren't we? <laughs> you're always going to have days when things aren't going so well and um, you're, al you're also going to have days when you're just like everything falls into place. What, what the, the, the key is that you're, um, to become brilliant, to become one of those DJs that people like come and they just go, wow, he's absolutely amazing. It, is that you're bringing up your kind of median level of of greatness so that when you have a bad day it's actually much it's better like, than like everyone else's great day day. <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly so that's that's basically the key i mean it's it's a, a little bit um of a you know it's a bit obvious and a simple thing to say but really just practice is is pretty much it really practice does make perfect and 
don't beat yourself up when you have bad days or you know even even if those bad bad days or nights come in a club because at the end of the day you'll be learning more from those bad days than you will from the good ones so but that's, there's, there's truth in that you do learn more from your failures and from your successes yeah. and I also think it's a good idea to have short term goals rather than like instant goals so in other words if you start DJing and you, you, you do two bad mixes and it puts you in a bad mood um, if you haven't got any goals past getting that mix right it can really annoy you but if you've booked yourself if you've booked yourself you, you, you've committed to doing a, a new mix once a week and putting it on your, on your hosting page and you have got um, a gig once a month. Um, now, that bad mix is in the context of the fact that you've got a gig once a month and that you do a mix every week that people listen to. So when you look back on this year, you won't remember the, the days when it didn't all click into place. You'll see the fact that you've done 50 mixes, 10 of which were really good, and you had 12 gigs, three of which gave you something that you can look back on for the next 10 years with a massive smile. You know, That's it. it's just setting goals. And then, as you say, Mike, not beating yourself up when, when you don't feel right one day. Because life is not about everything going in a straight line. And, and no. if it was, if it was, everything would be great, wouldn't it? You know, there'd be no ups and downs. There'd be no, there'd be no, um, no smiles or sadness. It'd be pretty boring. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I think, I think that's a good point. Just don't beat yourself up and, yeah. and record your sets. Record your sets. It's a, it's a killer. If I, if, I, if I could teach people two things, it would be record your sets and play out. You know, and if, if you can do that, then um, the rest is going to fall Yeah, no, and with, with making music, it would be record everything and finish everything. <laughs> or finish <laughs> so, as much so, as I possible. Mean, yeah. The two are super close, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're super close. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, thank you very much for that one, Corey. That was, uh, it, was it was heartfelt. Um, this is just a real technical question. I just pulled it out because I don't think I've ever answered it on the website. So apologies for this, Mike. Um, it is from Jack Jones, and he says, "Would you advise to use the crossfader to mix, or just use each deck's volume level with the crossfader in the middle at all times?" Mike, how did you use to mix? Very quickly, crossfader uh, or no? I yeah, used the two levels. House DJs, two levels, kind of scratch DJ, <laughs> crossfader. You know what? I, I, I use the crossfader and I have got no idea why. I couldn't tell you why. Um, I use it as an on-off switch, basically. And I think I use the, um, I use the, the, the line levels um, at the same time as well. When, when, uh, when um, I found, actually, when I first started, when I was only playing on my own mixer, I used the crossfader. But what I quickly found when I went into lots of different clubs when I was getting booked all over the world was that crossfaders were very, very different, whereas volume levels it's much much Tends easier to, to work, same, it, yeah. work out which is why i moved to using the, the you know the individual levels but i did still use the crossfader occasionally um, when i got a little bit overweight i used to uh, accidentally hit it with my belly <laughs> <So> <laughs> i can't believe that it's true <laughs> well if it's true I'm, I'm glad you don't have any pictures i'm glad i haven't seen them anyway um there are people as well who turn the crossfader off this is a weird one but it's true who turn the crossfader off because um they they find that their coiled headphone cable keeps hitting it, oh, yeah. um, and and once you move from left to right, it's the one thing that's going to get knocked. Yeah. So crossfaders quite often have an on/off switch, and you can just turn them off if if that happens. Um, so thanks for that, Jack. Um, now, as a, a couple of questions left, I'm just trying to work out the most obvious one to have um, next. Um, this is this is one we could probably chat about for a while, and I'd like you to to do what I'm doing now, which is not that easy for us, Mike, but let's try it. Think back to when you were 16. Um, so Dominique says, I'm 16 and my main struggle is where do I even begin? What do I buy? What should I be learning? And what should I be taking into consideration? So I'd like to start this one because I think um, out of the pair of us, Mike, I, 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 I meet more Dominiques in my daily life. <laughs> um, and. Um, and I sympathize completely with what he's feeling. He's feeling completely overwhelmed. He has this big swell of enthusiasm for music and for DJing and for producing and for just getting involved in the music industry. And I'm, I'm going to assume that he, he can find records that express how he feels where words can't and all that stuff because that's how we all feel about music and that's why we're in it. Um, and it is very difficult to know where to spend your, what, what will be a very little amount of money uh, and also where to, just who to turn to, where to start learning. At 16, you haven't got this network of people above you who are successful in this. And, and it is, I, I completely sympathize with you, Dominique. And the fact that, you're, you, the fact that you have this set of thoughts is, is a good thing, is a good start, because it shows that you, 
your brain is already looking for the answers to it, even though you can't put any of it into words. Um, so sorry if that was a bit rambly, but the point is it's okay to feel like that. And my advice, I know it's like a broken record and I say it all the time, but my advice is quite simply, if you want to be a DJ or you want to be a producer, um, put something in the calendar that says, this, by this point I will have this done. And it could be the smallest thing. It could be I will have something I can press play on and say, I did that. Or it could be, um, it could be playing your end of school party. So go and see the, the head teacher at school and say, I'm going to do the music for the end of school party. Because once you've committed to doing something like that, everything else falls into place. You know, in my case, it always used to fall into place 24 hours before what I promised I was going to do because that's just the way I am. Um, <laughs> But what I tended to find was I'd done a lot of thinking leading up to that point, um, which I didn't realise. Um, but, you know, if you book yourself playing, playing your school hall, um, you will find a way to get from somewhere the, just the gear you need to make that happen. You'll find, your brain will find a way to put just enough pieces of music on your hard drive to play on that night. And your hands will work out how, what buttons to press to make sure there's no gaps. Uh, and it will feel like the most alien thing in the world to you and you will feel like like you're not a DJ and you'll feel like why am I doing this and all these mad emotions but at the end of that you know party you will have done it and you will know more than 80% of people who, who think the way that you're, you're feeling now Dominic you will know more because you'll have done it I always say it's like having a travel guide you buy a guide to a big city uh, that you don't know um, and you read it and it's all really good but it's all really like you know, you're imagining what this place must be like. If you go to that city and spend a weekend there and then come back and look at the guide again, it's like a completely different book. You go, like, oh, that bit was there. And it's the same with DJing. It's the same, I, I, I know you're going to agree with me, Mike, with producing. Yeah. Once you've, your hands and your mind have done something, the, what's important falls into place and what you were worrying about that isn't important just goes. Um, I wish I was 16 again to, to do all this with what I know now. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, the, feel the feeling of overwhelm is uh, w one that's very, very common before you start. And, and, and probably 98, 99% of people, that feeling will stop them ever doing it. Remember that. So the 1% the of people who actually do something with these feelings and actually get, they get somewhere are those who have already have gone through those emotions and those feelings of overwhelm and not knowing what to learn. I mean, what, what you buy, what you should be learning and what you should take into consideration. I mean, it might seem, um, again, I'm being like a little bit facetious and obvious, but the answer to all three of those questions is, are, is the same, is, is music. Because music is what it's all about. And um, like, uh, um, I know you're probably talking about what do you buy in terms of equipment. Well, the equipment is kind of secondary to the music. The equipment's just the conduit to, th through which you play it. I mean, I, I know a lot of the older, the people who are older than, even older than me, if that's even possible, um, who are DJs, you know, they, they started playing on like their um, parents' vinyl record decks. They started, you know, with cassette tapes and you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So actually the equipment... I did, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, got to, I got told off by my father for holding a record still that's it. and letting go of it while I took the pause button off that, the cassette player because he told me that record player is not made to do that. Yeah, that's and exactly I what I, I had that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I mean, none of us started on anything like the gear no. that's available for $150 yeah. nowadays. Yeah. You know, and, we didn't have anything near, nearly that good. And what one of the one of the words that I always kind of when I see it in a question and it always kind of rings alarm bells for me and that's the word, word should what should I be doing well that implies that there is a correct answer and that there is a best answer there is never a best answer there are many 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 great great things that you could do so so the thing to do is just do something, <laughs> you know, d d and don't think that doing that thing, it's kind of similar to what we were talking about before, but don't do think that doing that thing, um, and it's not, you know, the, it, it ends up not being the thing you end up doing, it doesn't mean that that's wasted time, it, it, because you've learned from it, and, and, and so you, you do something, basically, <laughs> um, rather than be just staying in this st uh, constant state of over overwhelm. 
And it's, put, it's about putting, um, you know, putting a score on the board, Dominic. It's about having something you can say you did. If you want to make tunes, then get that free software on your computer and, and make a tune. Even if it's only putting a beat and a, you know, a vocal together, do it. Um, finish it. Put it, on, put it in your iTunes and put it on your MP3 player and give it to your friends. If it's DJing, book that first event. Even if it's only going to your friend's house and playing there for a few more friends, book it and tell people you're doing it. Just telling people that you're doing it makes it more real. Yeah. Um, and use whatever's in front of you. Don't worry about gear at all. The gear you will play if you if you do this for the next twenty years, you're going to play on a hundred different types of gear. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and um, I guess one more. I guess you can sum it up by saying that. Um, doing something makes you right. Yeah. People, people who people whose hands aren't dirty are they're wrong. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what other people think. Yeah. If you're doing it, you're right. That's so right. just get on with it, Dominic. Get on with it. And you're 16, and you can, you know, you've got plenty of time to to do a bit of everything and work out exactly what it is that, that you're really put on this planet for. So That's just it. get on with it. Um, Mike, we've run to the end of the of the, the half dozen questions I pulled out this week. Um, Thanks once again for your time. Yeah, absolutely, no problem um, at all. I've loved it. And uh, yeah, let's 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 meet up and do it again. I think um, on the first podcast we we just hit record and did, did the best we could. A classic example of just doing it. It yeah, wasn't the best quality <laughs> by any way, way, shape, or form. Hopefully, we've we've improved a couple of things for for people watching it this this time. And no doubt next time we'll we'll spot a couple more things that we can we can improve. But please keep your questions coming in, guys, at uh, digitaldjtips.com slash contact. Just let us know what your biggest problem is right now and we'll do our very best to chat about it on the next webcast. So, Mike, thank you very much. Cheers.